Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds by nerds, hang out with this nerd. Nerdarch is Ted. And we're doing another intro into D&D. This time we're going all the way to the back of the player's handbook with inspirational readings. <laughs> Let's start this video by thanking our sponsor, Easy Roller Dice, whether it's your first set of dice or your one millionth set of dice. Easy Roller Dice for your dice rolling needs. Down in the description you can find a link to Easy Roller Dice dot com backslash nerdarchy as well as a one-time coupon code to get 20 percent off your order go get your easy roller dies all right so we're diving into or continuing our intro to DD series this time we're going to jump to the way back of the player's handbook page 312 inspirational reading yeah so this is a great way to kind of mind places for ideas and it gives you a way to think about gaming and role-playing games and Dungeons and Dragons specifically and what kind of characters you want to play what kind of games you want to play you know myself Nate Ted Nerdarchus Ryan throughout our series we've 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 kind of jumped back and forth with different characters from different works and different books that we've brought up in order to say hey that it's kind of like this character and use them as examples of character classes and races. When when you get into novels or even to a point, uh, you know, movies, you see characters doing things and you say, that's cool, I want to be able to do that. And in a fantasy game, a lot of times there's a way to do it. You just have to figure out how. So if you if you present your idea to whoever's running your game, your dungeon master, and say, well, I want to play this type of character. He did this. How do I do that? Or can you help me make a character that's capable of doing that? Yeah, I, and really, like, if you go to the inspirational reading section of the of the, the back of your player's handbook, literally a lot of those books actually inspired D&D, right? Inspired the worlds of D&D anyway. So there's going to be a lot of correlation there. You know, you had things like, um, like Lord of the Rings and from Tolkien and, and The Hobbit, which is like the kind of like the beginning of the fantasy genre, you know, without going into folklore and mythology, which that's kind of like draws heavily from. Mm -hmm. And so you might, you know, you may just get the player's handbook and these books and it's intimidating and you don't know what to do as a player or even as a GM, what kind of game will want to run? Well, if you look to the back of the player's handbook at some of those inspirational reading suggestions and Maybe you've read them, maybe you've seen movies, TV shows, graphic novels, whatever, based off of them. Maybe that'll help ins inspire you as the GM and as the players to go, oh, I want to play that kind of character. You know, they have things that are very, like, swords and sorcery, like Conan in there listed. They got things that are very silly and high magic. So, if, like, you know, it's not listed in there, but Piers Anthony wrote the Xanth series, and it's a very pun-filled comedic world the books are great they're actually what got me into reading novels as opposed to to comic books and i've i've taken elements of that and i've put them in games that i've run and you know it's been to the enjoyment of you know of many right and you might want a more realistic and gritty game like game of thrones or maybe you greatly admire some of the characters in the, in those stories and you want to make one like those and and you could go in another direction and look at the entire you know Forgotten Realms or Dragonlance works, you know whether you want to go with the Legend of Drizzt series by Ari Salvatore, or the uh, the Chronicles of Dragonlance. These are D and D stories, and these are characters. Literally, the Chronicles of Dragonlance was a campaign. They ran that in D and D. And you also have other inspiring works like, uh, you know, like Moorcock with Elric of Melbourne, where if you want to play that dark and brooding anti-hero, hero, well, he was one of the first. So that would be a great character to model off of. And not only do these, these books give you uh, ideas for characters, but they're, they're, they're novels. You get to see the conversations. So when the characters are talking to other people... That's them role-playing. That's the kind of things that those characters are going to say. So whether you're a GM looking for, well, how do I interact with the hero? Or whether you're the hero, one of the player characters, how, how do I interact with other people? This is how you do it. Just look at the conversations that happen in, in novels or, again, in you know, movies, TV. The things that those main characters are doing and saying, those are the choices that you as a player get to make. Yeah, many, many of 
these things from novels, TVs, movies, uh, from shows and stuff. They've found their way into our games. They've inspired us. We've made characters based upon characters that we've read about or watched in a movie or, you know, tried to run games in that style. So as, when you come together with your friends or the people that you're going to play, be playing this game with the other players and the dungeon master, this kind of gives you a blueprint where you can all agree on the style of game. Because if you've all read the same books or you've all watched the same movies, you all have an idea what to expect. So it's really important you guys can all start off and have it like the same kind of expectation of the game you're going to be enjoying. Because it becomes problematic if you know someone wants to run more of a fairy tale, silly game that's more like Xanth, when someone else wants to run a more gritty and dark and realistic game like maybe like Game of Thrones. Yeah, the, those those characters are not going to mix well together. So having an idea beforehand is really gonna gonna make for the the overall enjoyment of everyone at the table. Right. It's just a matter of everyone having the same expectation. Like, and it's funny too when you look at those suggested readings. Like, I kind of like snickered a little bit when I saw the Stephen King on there through the eyes of drag of the dragon. Right. Has there's no fantasy elements in that game whatsoever. <laughs> it is literally more like a mystery you know suspense thriller that happens during medieval times right but you know the there's some people like oh i the dragon stephen king it's got dragon in the title and clearly it's got a it's got to apply but you know but it does speak to like what can influence the style of game you're running and what style of game you want to play what kind of characters you want to make so so it's kind of important that like there's this vast range of places for you to draw ideas from and even though they're, they're not necessarily in there, like you could even look to other things, other genres, and incorporate some of that stuff into your game as well. But going into genres and themes, that's ab absolutely an excellent point because there are times that you, know, you don't have to run a basic fantasy game. Uh, you know, you can you can run noir, you can run a uh, horror, you you can run mystery, you can run spy, all in a D and D game in a D and D setting. So if those are elements that you really enjoy or you would like to explore, it can be done and can be done pretty easily within the D&D setting. Well, speaking to our, like, H.P. Uh, uh, Lovecraft is one of the suggested readings that and inspirational readings in the back of the book, and it's, it's fantastic stuff. It's so. the entire works of H.P. Lovecraft is what, it's, is what it recommends. So, <laughs> absolutely. Well, the funny thing about... Um, about something like that it's actually easy to digest because it's all short stories so that that actually makes it a little bit easier depending on you know what kind of reader you are what, what you're looking for so if you have any questions on using inspirational readings in your games if you have any questions you can put those down in the comments below and either ourselves or one of our awesome fans will be more than happy to to answer that for you while you're down there don't forget to like share and subscribe maybe you even have some suggestions of your own while you're down there, suggest them. Don't forget to drop by the description where you can find that link to Easy Roller Dice backslash Nerdarchy and get your one-time coupon code for 20% off. Go get your Easy Roller Dice. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.